Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega graphics. Now, graphics cards, as we know, are very expensive. So, is this a good option for a budget-priced gaming PC? We'll have to find out. So the Ryzen 3 2200G is out now and is $99 retail, which makes it $10 cheaper to its predecessor, the 1200, which did not have any built-in graphics. So right there off the bat, the 2200G um, is just a good upgrade if you were ever looking at a 1200 um, Ryzen 3. So an upgrade already because you get the built-in graphics and it's coming at a cheaper price. So off the bat, Ryzen 3 already looks like a pretty good offer if you were looking at the low end of the Ryzen CPU scale. And if you were looking at any CPUs for a budget machine, uh, Ryzen 1200 would have been good, but this just made everything a little bit better. So right off the bat, um, definitely a good processor just where it's kind of in, in line with other processors if you're looking for, once again, a budget machine. Now with the Radeon Vega 8 graphics on board, maybe, if you really are in a pinch to save some money and not buy a graphics card right now since they're so expensive, maybe this will get you by for a little while depending on what games you're playing because you won't need a graphics card. It will be able to do so as long as you have a motherboard with some outputs that are gonna work for you. So that's one thing to definitely pay attention to. So we're gonna go over our test results in just a second for gaming and see what differences we have with the Ryzen 3 2200G with eight gigs of RAM inside the machine 16 gigs, and then also when it is overclocked with 16 gigs, both overclocked on the cores and overclocked on the graphics side of, you know, the CPU, APU, GPU combo, or whatever you want to call it. So we're going to look at all three of those against each other to see, you know, what is the best performing. Obviously, an overclock should help this the most. So don't be surprised there. But does 8 gigs or 16 gigs matter? Because the reason I bring that up is if you're building a budget tier system, which the system I tested this in is right under $500 with eight gigs of RAM. Um, we'll go over those specs too briefly, but the, the specs, you know, that's important because if you're not trying to spend way too much money because you're trying to avoid that with, you know, avoiding a graphics card right now, that is probably two to three times what it should cost you don't want to really go out and buy a bunch of memory, which is also very expensive right now. So can you get away with eight gigs? Well, you need 16 gigs. So 16 gigs of memory right now is almost $200. So right there could be about half the cost of a machine. So let's dive in to the specs and the numbers of this machine and see what we have to work with. Taking a quick look at the specs of the budget machine that we used for this, we have an MSI B350 PC Mate motherboard, so we can overclock on it. It's a little bit larger ATX motherboard, but if we upgrade to a dedicated graphics card later, that'll fill in nicely. We have, of course, the 2200G Ryzen 3 processor. We have 8 and 16 gigs of RAM that we tested with the Corsair Vengeance 2400 megahertz memory. Um, we have a Samsung SSD. We have a one terabyte spinning hard disk drive as well for all of our media and storage, and a 450 watt EV VGA bronze power supply. The first test that we started off with was Cinebench. We tested, of course, as I said, with eight gigs, 16 gigs, and then we did our 16 gigs with an overclock of 3.9 on the CPU and an overclock on the Vega graphics at 1350 megahertz, which is about, I believe, 125 or 150 megahertz jump from stock frequencies. Um, none of those are crazy, but you can probably get a little bit more out of them, but this was nice and stable without doing too much work. Our graphics scores, as you can see, definitely varied the most um, when it came to the graphics side of Cinebench, but also we saw a actually pretty nice bump on the CPU score when we overclocked. Other than that, both eight and 16 gigs, we see about the same score on the CPU. Next, we tested Dirt Rally on very low at 1080p with two times MSAA. As you can see, our averages definitely were very, very different. We have almost double the FPS between eight gigs of memory in the machine and 16 gigs of memory in the machine. So it would appear just off the bat that uh, both these, this game and the CPU GPU combo likes more memory in your machine to be able to pull more for the Vega graphics on the card or just what the game is also demanding. But we also saw a nice little jump up to 125 FPS with the overclock on both the Vega and on the CPU. So uh, really good FPS numbers on very low. Obviously the game doesn't look great, but definitely playable and looks good. We then 
did the game again on low settings at 1080p with the same two times MSAA. Um, low actually looks a lot better than very low. Very low really turns things off. Uh, low looks a lot better. Obviously, our um, 8 gig version of the machine took a big hit at 25 FPS. 46, also a pretty big hit, and 53 with the overclock. But um, in general, you can see that uh, again, having another eight gigs of memory made quite the difference um, for the FPS numbers. Um, we're, we're pretty close to 60 FPS um, with the overclock, so really not too bad. The next game, <clears throat> the next game that we tested was Counter-Strike Go on low at 1080p. Um, as you can see, we do see a very similar um, kind of analysis since our last game with uh, a very large jump between 8 and 16 gigs of memory. Um, 52 to 98, so almost double. And then um, we do see more than double if we do a little bit of an overclock on the uh, the GPU side and CPU side of, you know, the 2200G. So 108 FPS, which for Counter-Strike, I know obviously the more frames, the better. And so the game actually felt pretty silky smooth as well. So pretty good numbers overall if you have 16 gigs of memory. The third game that we tested was Overwatch on low, also at 1080p. Um, once again, it's happening. So there is obviously a bit to say about having an extra eight gigs of memory in the machine and running dual channel. You just get more performance out of the graphics side and probably CPU side of the 2200G. 42 FPS with eight gigs, 71 with 16 gigs and 86 FPS with the overclock. So overall um, definitely increases across the board and some pretty solid numbers for Overwatch. Definitely really playable with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, 42 is not horrible, but that's definitely not great. So um, 16 gigs, definitely recommended. And then next we moved on to Rise of the Tomb Raider. We played it on lowest settings and actually at 720p because pretty graphically demanding game. Wanted to see what would happen with one, you know, demanding AAA title game. Um, our average with eight gigs was 30 FPS, so console level average. Um, and then obviously 16 gigs, we had the 54, and with the overclock, we were above 60, which is, once again, respectable. We had to come down to 720p, um, but you know, definitely that would be a really playable number if you're not really worried about how it looks. And then we actually tried this test one more time at 1080p. We averaged 19 FPS with eight gigs, 32, which is okay with 16 and then 38 with the overclock. So uh, at 1080p, definitely a lot harder to play. Um, playing this whole game at 38 FPS would probably be a little bit difficult at 1080p. So I'd probably recommend just going back to 720 and playing at that 64 FPS average with the overclock. So um, definitely a difference we can see again on Rise of the Tomb Raider with having a bit more memory and a bit more uh, with the overclock as well. So there you have it, your gaming tests and results for your 2200G with 8 gigs, 16 gigs, and the overclock. Now, a bit surprising that that much of a difference is between the 8 gigs and the 16. And I will, I have kind of like two things to say about it. One, that's awesome you get that much of an increase with uh, an extra 8 gigs, but the problem is, eight gigs of memory right now costs you an extra hundred dollars. And at that point, you could probably buy dedicated graphics. Now, I'm not saying that if you went out and bought, you know, uh, let's say you could find a card for a hundred dollars that gives you some performance. I'm not saying you'd get, you know, the same numbers. Who knows? I, I don't have a, a way of testing at the, at the moment. Um, 16 gigs of memory is kind of the sweet spot just in general when you're building a new PC. But uh, obviously there's $100 that you'd have to put into that and this makes it about a $600 build. Now you do get some extra performance which is great but you have to spend about $100. And there is kind of the downside if you were trying to build something that was cheap and could still perform. So overall you kind of have to take the good with the bad. Obviously there are some okay performance numbers with, you know, this machine with 16 gigs of memory. And you can obviously still play games with eight gigs as well. And if you are really playing games that don't take too much to run, you like to play indie titles, you know, Hearthstone, League of Legends, just games that don't take much to run, then that would probably be fine. You'd probably be able to get by, but 16 gigs really does make a difference. Let me know what you think about that because I found that to be very interesting. In fact, I was so, so thrown off by it. I ran my tests like three times just to make sure things kept lining up the way they did. Um, yeah, because I really wasn't expecting that much of a difference. I was expecting maybe a 20 FPS difference, but not a 50 FPS, FPS difference in some titles. So um, definitely a little bit shocking. Overall, though, I think it's actually a really good value. And if you want to come in, like I said, and put a dedicated card in later, be able to buy a machine and have a system functioning now that is somewhat capable and then getting the dedicated card. I think that's actually a really, really smart way to go if you were gonna be building a fairly budget PC anyways. So 
Overall, I do like the um, 2200G. I think it comes at a good time since GPU pricing is insane right now as well. Um, so definitely check it out. I will leave you a link down below in the description. Like I said, let me know what you thought about those game tests. I'll probably do a little bit of a video over the entire $500 build that I did. Um, obviously, you've seen most of the numbers, but we can go over some of the parts and the chassis and everything in a different video. Perhaps let me know what you'd like to know about it. Or if you'd like me to test something else, I'd be interested to hear what you're looking for. But other than that, I'll see all of you in the next video.